think Omar going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what happened was um, we got signed as songwriters uh, for a country catalog. And before that, like, okay, I met with this lady. She was like, hey, I write, like, lyrics. I have a budget. I want to do a project, stuff like that. I met Adam in a barbecue. And then I was like, I heard... You remember what I addressed? Like yeah. How? <laughs> yeah. It was a uh, yellow shirt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I've heard uh, everybody knows Adam's a genius. So I was like, Adam, I got on one knee. Uh, can you please help me with this project? He said no. Then I showed up at his house and he was like, what are you doing here? I'm like, look, dude, I really need... So we went to his studio in Van Nuys and that's where we started working. Yeah. So Happy times. How long ago has this been open and how long have you been in well, This is actually our fourth <laughs> um, like um, coronary reconstruction or, or whatever you want to call it. Like This is like the, the next lifetime for us because <laughs> we moved like, I think... Four times. Yeah. Four times. Yeah. Okay. Moved studios, bought more equipment, worked on other stuff, like, you know, worked in other studios, came back. And then uh, we met Jason. And Jason is, like, a really legit, like, accounted businessman and all, all of the above. And a higher power. And he uh, told us like we were paying six dollars per square foot at Lexington and Highland and had a, a man management that stole stole <laughs> took without our permission <laughs> uh, a lot of money and we were paying like a lot of overhead so Jason said hey you can pay the same money and have like twice the size in the studio so that's how we came here we're at Bur we're in Burbank by the way <laughs> yeah and he had a vision and we kind of clicked R really fast, I can say. Yeah, yeah. I, s I started. <laughs> um, I started. I met them actually um, when I was working with another band. I was managing them, and they were in the studio, and we just clicked. They were, you know, re-recording, reproducing uh, one of their earlier tracks, and we just clicked. And I don't know. We moved over here, and I started bringing in bands and putting together websites and just trying to make it. You know, I saw the potential, like, these guys are brilliant, and I always wanted to be in music, so it's like a marriage made in heaven, or hell, we'll say. with uh, uh, Alien Ant Farm uh, w they had like uh, they just they're about to release their new album and we did uh, a couple of tracks for them which uh, Omer started with producing it and then he called me to help him with uh, keys and some arrangements you want to take some? well um, sure um, <laughs> well just just to be authentic to the to the story um, <laughs> yeah H how can I yeah yeah you can tell All right. That's, that's, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was um, in a band, and we toured with uh, Elena and Farm. Met the guys. Ta da da. They came to say hi, just casually. I, I, you know, just meeting, and then they were like, "Hey, you know, let's uh, work together on on the next record." After they've been in Chicago, spent like uh, an X amount of money on it. So doing the second round is always like harder. And that's what we did with your band as well that you were managing. We're like the second round guys, <laughs> you know. You failed with a producer. Come to us. We'll make everything better. The magicians. <laughs> the magicians, yeah, the magic. And it was hard. It was hard. It was a, it was hard. But you know, we we I'm very proud of what we did. And um, and yeah, I mean, Ali and M Farm, we did um, the the Franklin's Key thing. We we're the doing uh, the heroin right? We we did an EP. For the same uh, management company for the heroin after uh, Ellie and M Farm, which we, I actually met them through uh, Jay Baumgartner. I was just dropping by a studio and they were there, you know, good times. Um, and then we now we're wrapping up uh, Dominic Dickerson. Yeah. That's 
That's his, <laughs> that's his name. I hope it's not his artist name. Uh, we, I call him Damo. Great, great album. Great album. Um, but we've, we're active as session musicians as well. I mean, I gotta elaborate here that we, we move through the steps until we, we, we nobody's born a producer. Like, and if you're not specifically in the process of like playing, playing in a band, being an artist, getting signed as a songwriter, being an engineer for a while, and then there's no shortcuts. Yeah, I mean, Adam has been a session musician. I think one of the most rec- recognizable um, session musicians in Israel. Um, and uh, he's been touring with Daniel Powder and. You know, and he's even on his new video because he's a good-looking guy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm pr- yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so everything is really organic with how we we evolve, and we played sessions for some big, big names that you know we might not discuss, you know. But I think that's teaches you always as a producer. That's like the beautiful thing about it. That you can go and play a session for a songwriter that sold x amount of millions and you can see her producer work and you're like oh that's i'm gonna use that (laughs) you know it's a great way to inspire how could you be so cold Your, vo- your voice sounds pretty good, like, vo- <laughs> yeah, it's overrated. Actually, I did, we did it, like, in Israel, we played with a lot of, uh, like Homer said before, we played with a lot of uh, major artists, and... Elaborate. Yeah. I mean, those, Adam played with huge, huge acts. Huge, like, huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, like, the first thing I did here is to uh, audition to Daniel Potter band, the one that uh, sang the song, You Had a Bad Day, in case people don't uh, recognize him. That was kind of fast, man. You are right? <laughs> <laughs> and we played with a lot of artists in Hollywood, and we kind of explored the scene. And then we started to produce, and we, we write songs. We did a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, the first thing we did is writing songs, right? It's all Right, right. Yeah. You can tell them about the country library. Yeah, yeah. Um, through that, we we understood that like uh, what's unique about our connection is that it's first of all it's a one stop shop. Like we can, Adam <laughs> more than me can play like a lot of instruments. I complete like with what I can, you know, like uh, engineering, you know, mixing, you know, doing doing what I can. And through the funny thing is that through the the Israeli community, even we're we're both from Israel. If somebody didn't get that, Zayn Mizan. <laughs> you have to say that, right? Yeah, it's uh, the equivalent of uh, fucking fuck. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're both from Israel, and when you migrate, you get a cultural shock in here, and you sometimes go to the community you're most recognize, recognized with, um, and we have a lot of friends that are amazing, amazing, rec- work at the record plant, amazing engineers, or amazing players, and amazing bands in here that kind of helped us grow and 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 you know and sometimes like it gets to a point where you're competing with them but you know i hope it's a healthy sport for everybody um so yeah so we're a one-stop shop like we play all the instruments we do like whatever we need to do so that as songwriters when we did that catalog that country catalog it was very useful because we would just meet for like four hours and send a song back to nashville it was the first time we were like dealing with those kind of songs. I mean, right? And I, I sang, I think, the majority of the project. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And actually, like you know, with the language barrier and and everything, music is such a powerful language that people just picked up on it. It was fine. Nobody told me anything. I told you something. About yeah, you told me a lot. <laughs> so you didn't know anything about country beforehand going into this, or did you have some kind of idea of what like the Johnny I mean, Cash is? Uh, the Conway Twitties of the world and kind of figured that out through there or did it just come? We're doing a lot of things, you know, it's kind of diverse. There's so many genres here, so many uh, kinds of musicians here. 
so you got to be able to you know to do a lot of uh, styles that's part of the game and we're always always learning I and mean, that's the beauty of it I think I think you know what separates us from being just players or just like guys that come and do the work uh, me and Adam like sometimes we take breaks in the studio and just listen to music and I was a big fan of Mel Haggard and you know a lot of like old country like not the commercial country that we know today and and I think in Israel it, it was very like unique like that somebody has bluegrass chops and he can play like you know like banjo style um, but in here it was like you know, I met like Steve Travato at NAM and played with him, and he was like, <laughs> "What are you doing? Like, you know, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Like, people has been have been doing this here for years and amazingly. So, I mean, I had a lot to catch up, but, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. So, what do you think about the music industry and the way it's going, especially with uh, <laughs> larger record companies not really having as much control as they used to? I mean, for your, uh, for you guys as producers and you're owning your own production company, how has it changed? How have you seen the change? You want to you wanna answer that? Sure. Well, everything is becoming independent now. And the beautiful thing about it, um, in a kind environment, yeah, where people are, are not, like, really bad, <laughs> is that the human element is the most important element right now. This is 98% pirate industry right now it's piracy is all over so that means that we got to be kind to each other and we got to be good people in other words me and adam has been in situations where sometimes certain management companies certain labels will come into place and will be really shitty to us and we'll be like well and this is where sometimes we disagree but i think our integrity is something that, you know, has no boundaries at this point because the industry is independent. Because the artist that is not signed is to us as important as the artist that is signed. It doesn't matter to us. And even with one of our larger projects, they had to move a label mid midway into the record. Midway into the record, and we helped them do that. Because it was so out there. I think this situation putting the producer in a really important uh, role because you, especially when you're working with people that you're dealing with, uh, you know, fir first uh, album artist, and that's a huge responsibility, especially when the, there is no there is no A and R's uh, and uh, company people that uh, you know develop. You got to do everything by yourself. On the other hand, there is like. Um I, I did a record in Colorado with an indie band. Great, great band. And midway into the record, like, there was... Stop, stop, stop. This is, like, too much. Like, I'm talking about being involved. The music was fine. And this is something that indie artists um, have, have came up with, or companies have came up with. Like, the control is so dynamic right now. People may have, like, an ideal and go with that. And that's a beautiful thing, you know, that's a lot of faith in today's industry. It's not like all about paperwork and it's about like, you know, like I said, the people. So where do you guys see Ryan Band in the next three, five years? Hopefully still doing the same uh, stuff, working with super talented musicians. And, you know, we just love what we do, what we do. And so, you know. Uh, 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 u